Hi guys, welcome to episode 5 of my podcast series and today I wanted to talk about uh, a topic that a lot of my friends can relate to which is maintaining friendships in your late 20s and I guess why I say late 20s is because uh, most people at this stage in life have kind of like moved on to like full-time jobs, you don't really see your friends like as often anymore compared to like if you had seen them in school or you had more time during like university or whatever it is to hang out with them and um my friends requested me to talk about this actually because I did do like a... Every time I meet my friends, I'm like, what do you think I should talk about? Then they're like, oh, actually you should talk about this. It's quite an interesting topic. Um, so I'll bring up some of their experiences as well to uh, share with you guys. And I do have a lot of... To- I do have a lot of things to say on this topic as well. And I'll mostly cover like different types of friendships um, and how it's how it works for me to maintain them. Yeah. I know it's not easy because by this stage in your life, right, a lot of people, when they have their full-time jobs, they're also at a different stage when they may potentially have a um, serious relationship. They could be like looking to get married. Some people may even have kids, uh, etc. So sometimes a friendship takes like a backseat to everything. Um, and I think a lot of times people often forget or like not really take advantage, but like kind of take for granted the friendships that they already have already made and then only realise it when it's too late that like, oh, I should have made more effort to hang out with my friends or like maintain the relationships a lot more even though we are all very busy. I know. The thing is that the common, the most common excuse that people have is like, we are all so busy with our lives that we we can just text each other. We don't really need to meet up. We don't really need to hang out because like, you know, you're busy with your work, you're busy with your career, your job, your other activities that you have to do that um, you know, it's okay, we don't we only need to see each other like once like once a year or something like that. Um and sometimes it's okay for it to be like that, but I think if I talk about the different types of friendships, um we can kinda go into a bit more detail about how I would handle the situations. Yeah, and that would be like today's episode. I don't know why that sounded so like I have a whole course on something. It's, it sounded like I was a teacher going to give you like, here is a lecture on how to maintain friendships 101. That's the, that was not the vibe I was going for, okay? <laughs> just just going to share my personal experiences because I know that it's something that's not very easy to do um, and it's also very time-consuming. It also takes up a lot of your energy. Sometimes you're wondering, so is this friendship even worth to maintain? Like all these questions that you have. So hopefully I can answer some of them today. And like I was saying, because we are also busy, right? And a lot of times when you work, you work, for example, the standard nine to six job, right? After you're done with work, you may have not not have the social battery already to continue like an extensive catch up with a friend, for example. And when you're really low on battery and then you think about like, oh my God, I need to go and like have a conversation with my friend. And it's like, yes, you miss this person, you want to see them, but sometimes you're just not in the right space, right? Then you end up postponing a lot of the meetups and then you just end up like, cancelling like, hey, I'm not feeling well, cancel, move on, like let's do a rain check. And um, you just forget about it eventually. Like the, the telegram messages left unread then in your chat. Then you're just like, okay, I'll do it another day. But if if both parties are like, oh, we'll just do it another day, then no one takes an initiative. Then it doesn't like, you know, come to, um, come to, not what is that word? It doesn't come to life. No, like it doesn't happen. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, and I do think, right, that um, sometimes having dinner and a catch up doesn't really sound very enticing. It's it's just like, I know it's a standard procedure to do. Like, it's the given, um, like, go-to way to catch up with a person. Like, hey, let's meet for dinner today. Like, we can go get dinner, go get, like, some ice cream or whatever, and then, like, we can go home. Then, every time you meet them, you're, the standard questions is, like, how's life? What are you doing now? Like, are you dating anybody? Like, uh, you know, anything new? Are you travelling soon? Like, the standard questions that you will ask before. And... Maybe you will feel that sometimes it's a bit redundant also or like you're just like, am I just meeting them for the sake of meeting them? Um, and I think it may be the case. Sometimes it's just such a routine or like it's a habit that you're like, I miss this person but you don't want to give up on a friendship or you don't want to be like, oh, we've already been friends for so many years. Like what's like, th- like should I, why should I stop hanging out with this person? I think it's also easier if you have similar interests, of course. Like, if I think for me the easiest way for me to maintain my friendships also is because like for example my friends who love to dance together like at a period where I was really really like going for a lot of dance classes I could have those friendships be very strong and I'd be very close to those people because we saw each other all the time like once a week I'll not once a week I see them like maybe twice or 
three times a week uh, because we'll go for classes together versus someone who I would only hang out in secondary school and I only meet them like once every like six months. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I do think at different stages in your life and depending on your interests, you will have formed closer friendships with certain types of people also. And it's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, and um, I do miss my friends who I may not spend as much time with, but it doesn't mean that I would... I value their friendship any less than the friends I would feel closer to now lah. Yeah. Um, and I think like moving on to like the different kinds of friendships and how to handle them is like, my friend also told me like, okay, so the friend I'm referring to, to in today's uh, video is, her name is Cheryl. We were very close friends throughout our work days because we were colleagues and we were friends like for three years. And be- in that three years, we realized that we could just be friends outside of work as well. So we're not just like colleagues. We were like, we will have similar interests outside of work. We'll hang out with each other, like outside work hours and everything. And I really, until today, consider her a very, very close friend. Um, and currently, like, she was, when she was talking to me, she was saying like, we don't have rules on, or like instructions on how to make friendships, you know. We just like make this up as we go along. And I totally agree. And that's why maybe certain people have different expectations in a friendship lah. And, um... For example, there are certain kinds of friends. So, like, there are friends you, like, potentially would catch up with them over dinner for versus friends you, like, kind of spend your life with. And they can also fall into the same category. But sometimes I do feel like the friends that I catch up with over dinner, right, versus the spread, the, the friends, friends <laughs> versus the friends, I would naturally gravitate to, like, you know, just more, like, I will see them in my future a lot more, um, have very different purposes, you know? Because... When you hang out with someone over dinner, right? Sometimes you can just have friends, like, who you may have some common interest with, but you know that, like, it's okay if, let's say, in the future down the road, you're not as close anymore. Because, uh, like, that that common interest or time has kind of, like, passed already. And, you know, you're all moving on to new things. But versus the friends, for example, like, I have, I would like to spend like, my life continuing being friends with them, right, uh, the feeling is just very different. Like, because y'all probably, like, really can relate to each other on many levels, right, that you don't even need to be like, okay, we need to meet for dinner every, like, three months or whatever to, like, catch up each other. Because we just know when we meet each other, like, everything will go back to how it usually is. Um, it's a very, like, instinctive kind of thing, I feel. Um, and I think it's, I think when you, I think when you know, you know like, what kind of friends that you have. And having more like superficial kind of friendships where it's more of like, okay, we catch up over dinner and catch up and see how our lives are. Um, doesn't make it like worse or it's not like a bad thing to have that. Because sometimes in your life, you just need friends who, you know, you want to talk to about certain things only. So like I have both types of friends, but I cherish the friendships that, for example, right, like we we can do a lot of things together. So we make an effort to do like activities together and it's not just like, okay, meet up once in a while for the sake of it. And um, I think even if we do nothing, I think it's also very valuable. So I like to go over to my friend's house and we just chill and like spend time with each other. We can just be like chilling together, like talking about like the most mundane things or like watching a show together or whatever. It sounds like a relationship, but it's not. But uh, it's kind of that vibe where you just feel comfortable in each other's presence, right? And then that's how we maintain the friendship. It's not always about or like having to be the most updated on each other's lives like it, we will be eventually but it's also about being able to just not feel stressed about having to like keep up with each other like and knowing that at the end of the day we will still be there for each other when we need each other to be la yeah for example another group of friends that i have which is like my gaming friends right like we used to be like strangers on the internet then we became friends because we play like the same game like so every night i like play valorant or whatever like we don't hang out in person as much maybe i meet them like mm, like two three times a year or like occasionally if we happen to go to an event a gaming event together then we go together but like most of the time i spend time with them online and then we just like talk and catch up online so it doesn't also necessarily mean that you need to meet up with someone to maintain the friendship and be like, oh, of course I saw this person, that's why we like, can continue this friendship. Like, it can also be simply like just texting each other or even like just replying DMs or whatever it is. Like, for if, for my kids and my friends, I just playing games together. Yeah, and because we spend that like maybe two hours like playing the game or whatever, right? Then we still talk about our life then. So I would honestly say that our friendship would be very, very close and I didn't expect it also because it's just how much time we spend together and the time that we spend is not like, not like painful lah. Like you shouldn't spend time with your friend then it's like a painful time to spend together. You know what I mean? It shouldn't be like, oh, I'm dreading to go meet my friends. Like I always look forward to like 
um, playing something together or like doing an activity together. That's why you don't feel like it's a pressure, pressured or you don't feel like it's something that you you don't want to do in a way. Yeah. So you must really enjoy spending time with them for it to be worthwhile for you. And that's why I say that like you have different types, like the friends you catch up for, over dinner for, right? Versus the friends that you spend like your life together. They, I think they would be like, they can overlap, but sometimes they can be very, very different people. So, yeah, I have a friend who, like, I got very close to her last time in, like, 2016, right? Like, we, we used to meet up more often, but now we don't meet up as much, right? But we can still talk, like, every other day, like, about a lot, a lot of things. And, like, I look forward to texting her when I'm free, you know? Like, once you you start dreading, like, meeting up with people, then I'm like, hmm, then maybe it's a sign to not meet so often because you... At, uh, at that point, you you will just feel like it's a bit of a burden. Then you don't want the friendship to be a burden or so. So that's not really like, just meeting them or whatever, it's not a good way to maintain your friendship because that's just a very like, the standard procedure. But sometimes it doesn't fit for every single type of friendship that you may have, you know? I feel that like in our culture, right, like people tend to uh, emphasize on just having like casual meetups for the for the for the sake of having casual meetups. Like, you know Chinese New Year they'll be like like oh like Chinese New Year gathering with these people. Like every year we have like one time gathering and like we hang out and catch up. And I think that's totally fine. Like there's nothing wrong with that. But um sometimes when you're in a group scenario, for example, like groups that are formed out of convenience, you know, like friendship groups from like secondary school, from your JC, from like uni or whatever, and they're all in this like big clique. I don't know why in Singapore like people like to hang out in like clicks this is just me like I feel like I know a lot of like people who have like this whole group of friends like maybe like five to eight of them and they always hang out like during big occasions or whatever it's like Chinese New Year like say Christmas or whatever and um I think that like sometimes it's okay to drift from these kind of people also because you may realize right as you grow older like the friendships that you make out of convenience in like secondary school or in JC or whatever it is right you all have a common interest of school you know like you all bond over the fact that you all are fucking dying for your exams like you need to stay in the same classroom and you need to study the same things you talk about the same things like every single day but then when you grow up you realize that you all have very very different interests or you all are just very very different people which is why like when a lot of friends can tend to fall out also when you're like traveling and stuff because you realize like someone's true colors because like when you're suddenly like staying with a person overseas for like Four, four to seven days or whatever it is, right? The way they behave may not be how they behave like in school, you know? And then you realise like, oh my god, actually I cannot click with this person. Like, we are just so... Like, the way we think can be so different, you know? So sometimes it can it can be very forced to hang out with people that you may not even see eye to eye with or like your values or your morals or your like goals are very, very not aligned. Sometimes in a group scenario, people will like say you for not wanting to hang out with the group or be like, the per- this person like very sports sport or like why, why this person always want to come and hang out with us? Like we are supposed to hang out in a group. And I do admit like last time, maybe when I was younger, I could have fallen into this like mindset lah. It's like, a, how about everybody make effort to come out? Like why this person like don't want to like come out with us or whatever. But then, you think about it, like, does this person really fit into the dynamic of the group or so? Like, if they don't, then I think it's okay to, like, really let go of that kind of friendship because you had, like, great times with this person but it doesn't mean that, like, those times in school can, like, really transcend everything to, like, continue to be great times when you're adults. Yeah, because people move on to live life in the way they want to live it and if you don't agree with how they want to live life, then there's no point in fighting with them over a friendship that, potentially may not even last in the future also, you know? Yeah, it's like, if you disagree with someone and you really fundamentally feel like you're such different people, right? Then sometimes it's okay lah, like, just like let go lah and like just distance yourself. Like you don't have to be like, I unfriend you, I don't be your friend, like come on, right? But just take a step back and be like, okay, I can see this person like once a year at a gathering. Like you must think about it, how much can I tolerate being around like this friendship or like being around this group of people? Like if you think once a year is like more than enough to like hang out and see them and be like, okay, like I got, I got excited from meeting them and it was a fun time together, but that's, a, that's it. Then, then it's completely fine. Like as a person, you only have so much like mental capacity to deal with feelings and emotions that aren't yours. So when you have to deal with friendships and like deal with your friends' emotions or so, like I feel that it's only worthy if you really feel like the value of the friendship and like you provide something to them and they provide something to you rather than they are just taking 
like if you maintain a friendship but they're just taking from you you know what I mean like sometimes friendships are I mean this is going to like the toxic friendship kind of realm already which I may not really cover today but um, it's it's sort of like if one friend only takes from the other friend right then like there's no point in continuing to like establish a friendship or like draw out that friendship also because you know that you're not gaining anything from it in a way yeah like it should be a mutually beneficial thing I'm lucky to have a friend group like from my secondary school and stuff right that um we still until now have quite a strong bond together and like we are like it's like five of us and we can still maintain a friendship until now and i do think last time when we were in school like actually surprisingly in uni because we all went to different unis right and went at different times that like uh we didn't really hang out as much yeah because i wasn't sure so like oh did we like all see eye to eye or have like similar interests and i think most of us didn't make an effort to like hang out aside from like the once a year kind of meet up but i think uh once we graduated and it all started working right then we realized that actually we miss our company then when we hang out even though we are very very different people right we still are very supportive of each other and like we all want the best for each other like it's very funny because my best friend like my it's a, it's a label that we call each other since like secondary school like my best friend or whatever right uh doesn't mean that like, i'm the closest to her or anything but um we are very very different people like i i do this at a job like this talking to camera whatever thing right like, she died also don't even want to talk to people like she refuses to even talk to her service staff like she like them like shy that kind of thing and like she will judge my outfits every time i post it she'll be like what the fuck are you wearing that kind of thing and it's so polar opposite right but it's the fact that even though you're polar opposite we don't like shoot each other down like we wouldn't like like be like why you like that that kind of thing like if she want to rock at home like the whole week or whatever I'm like, you just do that lah. like as long as you're happy can already you know like i then she's like why you got so much energy to go out all the time and i said i don't know i didn't do my job then we just accept that this is who we are as people and uh when, once you can do that right then i think it's very easy to like continue the friendship also if 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 you cannot accept that people are different or like y'all clash with each other, then then you cannot maintain that kind of like bond that you used to have. Ma. Yeah, so that is like one of the main things I feel is about accepting each other as who we are, even though we grow old and become different from what we used to be. Like if you know me last time versus now, it'll be very different. But if you choose not to accept who I am now, then cannot, uh, right? Yeah, but if you choose to accept, then I think it's okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yes, no, yes, correct, yes. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. <laughs> ah, I am talking to myself actually. What am I talking about? <laughs> the point is that there's no need to force a friendship if it's gonna be tiring. Yeah, and um it doesn't even need to be a toxic friendship. Like it could just be y'all grow apart that y'all don't even have any similar interests to talk about, right? That when you meet the person you're like struggling to even think about what to ask. You're like, oh asking the most mundane things and you're not even interested in their life. Like once you reach the point where you're like Actually, I don't really care about what this person is doing. Or like, I'm glad they are doing well, but do I really care about whatever business they're running? Not really. They are in a completely different stage from me. I cannot relate to anything they are saying. Then there's nothing wrong with that. You're so like, it's natural to just drift as this kind of thing happens. We can talk about friendships in terms of like low maintenance friends versus like high maintenance friends. And um, I would like to say, I mean, not to generalize, but I think that most people around the late 20s like have friendships that are relatively more low maintenance um, than something that would have been for like when I was younger, that kind of thing when I see someone very often. Um, because everybody understands that we are all busy with our own lives. So naturally, the friendships that stay are the friendships that are low maintenance but still make an effort like to catch up and be like, check in if you're okay and stuff like that. And um, I'm very grateful because a lot of my friendships are low maintenance but it doesn't mean that like, Low maintenance means we don't make an effort to hang out. Like. It just means that, like, you know, if you're busy, we just accept that we're busy. But we'll still text each other and be like, hey, I think of you, like, hey, how are you? That kind of thing. Um, and make sure that we are okay. Like, you will still make sure that they're doing well in life. Like, you wouldn't just, like, forget about them. It fundamentally boils down to, like, mutual respect for each other. Like, and if you don't have that mutual respect, right, then it, it doesn't make sense to even continue building a relationship with this person you know yeah because friendships are like basically like relationships i said it's not as serious but you still need to put in a lot of effort to ensure that like it, the other person feels like they are wanted or like present in the friendship you know okay like high maintenance friends like i think it's a bit rarer but i do think there are some people who may fall into this category if let's say i don't know maybe there's some 
some people who are not as like comfortable being alone or being by themselves, right? And maybe these people are people who often fall into relationships for like, uh, how to say, they need someone to be around them 24-7. So maybe they are someone who like, oh, they if they have no boyfriend or no girlfriend or no partner or whatever it is, right? Then they're like, oh, I need to spend time with my friends. Like, I cannot be alone. Like, they're not comfortable with being alone. And um, all, they, all they really, all there are people who really value like, the time spent together in person, but they don't realize that the other party cannot commit to like how much they are giving. Yeah. So um, I think it's like, honestly, if you have a relationship, like for me, like I have a relationship, right? Like if I have a high maintenance friend also, right? I literally cannot manage both. Like a relationship is already fucking high maintenance. So you still want to like add on a friendship that requires you to like be so present in their lives. That I think really cannot because it must be, must be understanding law yeah but that's for me that you know if you can accommodate that i think that's like great for you but for me it's like i really don't think i can i'll share a bit about a friend who um i think he's a very very giving person okay and i really appreciate that he's someone who makes a lot of effort to really prioritize me as a friend in his life um he's married okay it's not like he's interested in me or anything okay don't get it wrong don't get it twisted yeah but um it's is it, he's just like the kind of person who like when we have similar interests, he really wants to hang out and like spend time doing that similar interest together. Um, maybe like catch up over dinner and like check in with me and just want to like kind of like uh talk and like be around each other lah. And he was very nice also like he will also like get me gifts for my birthday and stuff like that. And I will do the same back but at the, not the same frequency that he could give to me. Like I think he's just someone who has a lot of energy and a lot of um, space to be giving but I think it's like more than the average amount of as a human being so for me like if I do the average right then like I think I was not meeting his expectations of um, maintaining the friendship and then like I think we he grew distant from me a bit for it but I could feel it lah but I I know that like okay he was distancing himself from me but I wanted to like at least clarify and, and I talked to him about it so I asked him to meet up one day and then I talked to him and I was like is it because like I don't have like time to reply you and stuff or like what? Then he said he understands my schedule, but then I think he also maybe feels like he's not appreciated. Like deep down, nah. then I say, okay, I completely understand. And I say like, I'm sorry that I didn't really kind of like reciprocate or like uh, give you back what you want. But I also think we need to establish like the expectations of like the friendship. Like I, I can be very honest that like, I will always be there for you as a friend, but um, I just don't have the capacity to always text you or always reply and always meet up because like, I'm also texting like my partner all the time. Like, I cannot afford to always text my friend and my partner and other friends, you know what I mean? Like I, I really, really don't. I don't like, can't even reply normal emails properly. You ask me to text like 20 people. Like, oh my God, I cannot. I think about it, you're like, giving me anxiety now. <laughs> like, oh my God, it's so stressful. Yeah, so I was just very honest and upfront and I said like, I'm sorry that I, I don't reply or like sometimes I ignore your messages and stuff. And I think it's very good if um, you can own up to like your own limitations, right, in a friendship. Because sometimes friends will expect you to reply, but then you never reply. Then they get upset by it, right? Then it's like, you want to say like, it is your fault, but at the same time, you really cannot. So you must just set it clear from the beginning. Like, this is how much I can give. Um, and I hope you're okay with it. And then now we're, we're very, very good friends. Huh? We both recognize our flaws in a way like my flaw is really not replying people like I, I have nothing to say <laughs> like I have really nothing to say I have issues and I feel so bad because it's like my friends really are like bitch are you gonna fucking reply me like hello and I'm just like uh, I'm trying my best like sometimes but um I know it's something I have to work on so I cannot always be like expecting my friends to reach out to me so sometimes I really have to try to be like, oh, I suddenly remember like, I haven't seen this person in so long. Let me take like five minutes out of my day to just text in and check in with them and be like, hey, you want to like hang out? Let's do something together. Using this as an example, right? You have to be observant also about like what kind of friends you have and what kind of friendships they want. Um, and like, what kind, like it's like what kind of relationship they want with you, you know what I mean? Uh, and I think you really can tell based on their reaction. Like sometimes if I always hear my friends whine to me about like, like, yeah, like, she always never reply, why? you always never reply. Then I'm like, it's true, la. but then I will just tell them, like, okay, I'll be very honest, like, really, really very hard, and I really cannot reply a lot of people. And yes, I'm making excuses for myself, but it goes to my next point later on, which I'll say, which is protecting your peace, okay? So I'll talk a bit about it later on. But 
I really just have to be very upfront. Uh. I'm like, you know what? This is how I am with everybody. It's not just with y'all. Not I purposely don't want to reply y'all or anything. So I think making it clear and like them understanding where you're coming from is also very important. Because when you when it's like miscommunication and then they just assume like when both friends assume of each other like oh this person I like, don't want to talk to me or like they're busy or they're busy hanging out with other people they don't hang out with me then like like it'll only be a negative outcome because you just assume the worst of someone for example yeah and um, I think if it's important to set boundaries for the friendship if they are your true friend they will really understand where you're coming from and they'll be like they wouldn't be like huh, like why this person like that? Like why I can do this for them but they cannot do it for me? Like because that wouldn't be a true friendship in a sense because as friends, you, you're you not expected to be there for each other 24-7. That's like you want to go and, do you want to date your friend, is it? Like you want to be together with your friend, is it? You know, that's the point of like reaching like you want to be in a relationship with your friend already. Yeah, so um, I think just being understanding of each person's like, daily struggles or what they're going through right or how they handle things right is very very important to maintain the friendship like say real and being honest like you cannot assume the worst of your friend like really really cannot because if let's say they just don't reply you then they're just busy la. they just don't reply you la. like you know like who are you that they need to reply you all the time you're you the girlfriend man you're their partner man like <laughs> <laughs> okay 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 no 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 <laughs> kidding they know i like that one la. yeah but um yeah yeah okay, okay. no angry no angry no I no I joking okay guys I joking joking not serious not serious just how I saying you know <laughs> yeah but yeah <laughs> okay okay my brother was like calm down calm down you are so, you tell people take it wrong yeah no 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 we're not meant we're not putting it out in a bad way okay it's just like just being honest just being honest yeah and um which leads me to my next point which is very important which is called protecting your peace and um a lot of times maybe you know like people expect certain things out of you especially when you form relationships with people like your partner has certain expectations of you yes your friends also have certain expectations of you but i also think right that there's no point in like spending time with people right if you don't feel like being with them or being in their presence adds a value to your life because if they are sucking the energy out of you right then i then you need to think about like oh is this friendship like what I thought it was? Like, is it the same kind of friendship that it was like maybe five years ago? Or or maybe now you feel like, hmm, I just think it's like very difficult to hang out with this person because we're just not aligned. Like, you must really evaluate the friendships also. And um, I was, in my previous like uh, videos, I thought about like burnout, right? You can get burnout from like just exhausting your energy on people who may not be deserving of that time and maybe the time that you spend with them right could be time that you could spend on yourself to like kind of like gain energy for yourself or so yeah because we all have like 24 hours in a day you spend like seven hours of it sleeping you spend like nine to six eight hours of it working you only have so much time for yourself and so much time to like hang out with like other people right that you want it to be fun like, you don't want it to be something that you're dreading. You don't want it to be something that's mundane or so. La. Yeah. So, think about it. I think it's important to always reflect and uh, think about the friendships. Because I I have... Okay, I'm someone who has... I know a lot of people because I meet a lot of people in the industry. I have a lot of interests. So, like, I mean, I have a lot of dance friends. I have, like, gaming friends. I have all these kind of things, right? But in the reality of it, right, it's like back then when I used to dance a lot, yes, I could hang out with a lot of my dance friends more because we'll be going for the same things together. I'll, I'll always ask them, like, you want to go eat dinner before classes, all this kind of thing. But now it's like, do I have that kind of time to spend with them? Not really, lah. Like, of course, I'll try to catch up when it's possible. But, um, like, sometimes they'll be like, hey, you also don't hang out with us anymore. You also never go dance anymore. Then I'll be like, yeah, I really never go dance already because, like, my priorities have shifted to doing other things. And I wouldn't be offended if my friends at that time would hang out with themselves or, like, go for classes without me because I know, right, that I cannot have the energy to go for these things with them. And I know it's okay. Like, I cannot I cannot fault them for wanting to do these things without me. And, um... If that means that they drift from me, then okay lah. So be it lah. Does it mean I will not say hi to them in person? No. I also think sometimes when you have friends in a group, right? It's only natural that some people in a group may form friendships within themselves. Let's say if it's a big group, right? And then you may not feel like you're as close to those people. But 
I do think like if people did that with that like, not a bad intention, like they just like okay, we're just close, we hang out. Like it doesn't mean that we can't be friends with you, but maybe we just don't spend as much time with you, right? That as a person, if like let's say it's me, right, I feel like oh, I'm being left out, that I should feel offended by it. Like, I feel like I wouldn't be because, like, I've been in these situations before. So, um, back then, like, uh, when I used to work in retail, right, I was close with, like, this entire group of friends. And um, as we grew older, I I was very, very focused on my career and my work that um, I didn't really have time outside of that to kind of meet up with a lot of people very often. And they would uh, occasionally ask me to go hang out or meet up and stuff, right? But it would reach a point where I probably, like, they know I'm very busy and then they just don't want to disturb me so they don't ask me. Then at first I was like, eh, next time show me lah. But I know sometimes right, when they want to show me, right, I'm also not free. So it's like, there's no point in them asking me if like, I'm going to say no, you know. So their logic is like, it's okay like, um, we will just hang out by ourselves because it's easier for us to like, just mingle with each other lah. And when I look back at it, I don't think I was ever like, oh my god, I feel left out by it because I know that if anything, I text them, right, they'll still reply me and they'll still want to hang out with me or like, I can meet them one-on-one. Maybe it's my personality, but I can like, rationalize and be like, I completely understand why this is happening. But there could be even like, sometimes in, in that same group, maybe someone else was like, left out, right? It's just because they are very different people or maybe they just don't align like, the, the way they see things or like, you know, some people like just naturally a bit more negative energy, then you may just want to like gravitate away from that. Uh, and maybe like said person could be like very upset by it. Lah. Yeah, and and it's I, it's normal to feel upset also. Like sometimes you don't understand why your friends are gravitating away from you. Um, but I think then it's on you also to try to like reach out and be like, hey, like, um, like can I hang out with y'all? Like what's going on? And sometimes if you push, you ask, right, and then they, like, a bit, like, uh, like, the reply, like, a bit, like, not really interested the reply kind, right? Sometimes it also can, like, take the hint, you know? Because um, I don't think I will fault the group for ostracizing if you never did it in a way that's meant to be hurtful, you know? Like, you never, like, like gossip about this person and be like, fuck this person, uh, like, don't want like, they in front of their face, like, very fake and nice to them, that kind of thing. Like, if it was not negative. Like, if naturally you just found to be closer with other people, then that's that's life law. Like sometimes like groups will just split up that kind. Um it's a bit sad, yes, I do admit you probably may feel sad that you may not hang out with them anymore, but um if you reflect back also sometimes you will see like why these things happen. Um and of course if they did it intentionally and they were being very mean about it and it was like low key or high key going towards like the bullying side, right? Then of course it shouldn't be tolerated. Lah. But then then you just think, why we want to be friends with them in the first place? Like to me it's like if they're going to bully you, if they're going to ostracize you, and they're going to kick you out of the group and like say all these other mean things, right? Then to me, it's like there's no need to even be sad about the friendship because like that wasn't even true friendship to begin with, you know? Yeah, so if by everything, right? Like when you grow up and you're like, okay, mid-20s already, you don't really have like uh, many opportunities to make new friends, that kind of thing in this stage in life or whatever. And you realize you only have like five good friends or like seven good friends or whatever. There's completely nothing wrong with that because... If you have very good quality friends, right, then you won't feel like lonely or sad or so. Right? It's not just about quantities. Like for me, like, yeah, I know a lot of people, but who are the people who are really close to me? I also have to count only like on the like my hands that kind of thing, right? I cannot I cannot be close to like Wow, if I meet everybody now close to them, that is like what like two hundred people I need to be close to. Uh. Like sell eh? like really impossible, you know. Yeah, so yeah. What was what's my point of this? I lost my train of thought. <laughs> My point is, my point is, pick and choose your friends and uh, choose the people that you really want to continue spending time and nurturing the relationship with. Yes, that was my point. And it's okay to have superficial friendships. That is my point. And um, like I said in previous videos, like our culture is very people pleaser, right? So you shouldn't make your friends feel bad if they say no, if they want to hang out with you. And maybe... It's my age, but all my friends are very understanding. Like, literally, my friend just cancelled on me today. Like, she's like, yeah, hey, I'm having damn bad period cramps. I really, like, don't want to go out. That kind of I'm like, it's okay. You can just rest at home. Like, the real friends will be like, don't worry. We can always reschedule and hang out another time. Like, you shouldn't make someone feel bad for, you know, cancelling a plan or taking a rain check and stuff. Because um, if it's real friendship, you know that, like, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that this lack of um, seeing each other would 
deter like your friendship in any way or another. You know what I mean? Yeah. Friends are not just the only thing we have in our lives, you know. Um, so my, that is just for a little tip for maybe people who are a bit younger watching. Like, don't worry about it. Don't be so... Don't don't stress your friend out over whether or not they can meet you. Like, people got other things to do with their lives, you know. Like, don't worry about it. If it's... Okay, if it's meant... Like I always say, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. If your friendship is meant to be, it's meant to be. If they don't make an effort to meet, meet up with you, they don't take initiative to hang out with you after cancelling with you, then maybe it's a sign that the friendship is not going to work out. And it's okay, even if it's eight years of friendship, it's really okay to let go. It will be sad, but it happens. Like, that's life. It really happens. Yeah. Um, so, to end of the video, I'm going to do a little, like, tip on how to maintain friendships. Um, and... I literally got this from my friend uh, Cheryl the other day. Like she typed all these out and I just tweaked them. And she basically put all my thoughts into point form because my brain is always like all over the place. Uh, so thank you, Cheryl. I love you. So I will start off with what she has suggested, which is um, according to her, initiate with your friends and invite them to things. Uh, and the idea is that you should always have something to offer to your friends. And for example, you could invite people to like the coolest parties or events or etc. Right, but it could be something as simple as like, oh, let's go eat this cake that I just bought. Like, come my house and try it or something, uh, or like let's go and do grocery shopping together. Which I completely agree. Like, there can be moments where you want to invite your friends to like very exciting things happening in your life. Like for me, like since my job is. Like, I get randomly invited to events all the time. Like, I always... Like, sometimes I used to ask Cheryl, like, you want to come with me? She'll be like, oh my god, yes, I'm down to come. But there's also times I'm like, you want to go, just go to your house and drink wine? And she's like, yeah, okay, let's do that. Then we just watch a movie and then we just chill. And like, I just sleep at her house, you know what I mean? Like, it's very easy to do like both. Like, so try to make an effort to also do both things, not just like do one or the other. Um, and yeah, activity-based... Um, meetups instead of just eating based friendships um yes i i agree but it's not the easiest for everyone depending on like your schedule and your time she said this which is like try to face out face out message them and like, send them funny things um i agree and actually i don't really facetime people enough but one of the people i facetime is cheryl but it's also because our friendship is that kind of dynamic where like we can just like blah, 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 and like talk for like two hours three hours and don't realize that the time has like gone by like so fast um but i do think like the new way of doing things is like to send people TikToks. I know, I know. That is so like, yeah, we should get off social media, blah, blah, blah. But sometimes social media just consumes your life and you don't know like you're spending like two hours every day scrolling on TikTok before you sleep. But it's, isn't it nice if like you see and you look at this video like, oh my God, I thought of you and then you send it to your friend and your friend's like, oh my God, you thought of me? Like, oh my God, yeah, this is so us. That kind of feeling. Like it's always at least nice to know that your friend thought of you when you saw it rather than you thought of them and you're like oh yeah this is like this person this person but you don't send it to them then they don't know ma, that you're thinking of them so it's always nice to have that reminder um and i do that often because yeah my life is just scrolling tiktok and unfortunately that's my job so i try to send to my friends or like whoever often um or like randomly surprise them like on a telegram chat like even if they don't have tiktok some of my friends don't have tiktok and then i just like copy and paste the link and i'm like this like oh my god i saw this and then i thought of you then they're like oh my god yeah so cute ha ha yeah um, nowadays the boomer generation all use IG Reel and scroll IG Reel which I don't do so like yeah sometimes they send me IG Reel I'm like guys I don't even open these things why are you sending me this <laughs> yeah uh, Cheryl wrote this and it sounds very like her she's like find occasions to just celebrate life together it's just such a like a thing that she would say that is so funny because she's just like yeah just like enjoy life spend time together don't stress so much about it which is so true friendship shouldn't be stressful like let's just be real okay like we don't have... And, like, we are so stressed about work every day. Like, we don't need, like, this other thing to stress us out, you know? She said is love everyone without expecting anything in return as much as you can. I'm like, okay lah. Not love until so strong lah, okay? Like, for me, it's like... You you give to people what you want to give to them. Because, like, you do it because you want to do it for them. Not expecting anything in return. Um, But, of course, sometimes it will be a bit sad if, let's say, like you always are the one giving and they are always are the one taking. So you must know when there is a limit. Like you have to draw boundaries. You have to draw boundaries also to this kind of relationships. Uh. But um, I think that 
it's important to always be there to support your friends uh, and to give to them. And like, you know, if, if they don't, then like, whatever lah. Like, don't, don't worry too much about it. I think it's just a personal value that I feel is uh, to just be generous and kind to people and don't expect anything in return. And um, of course, not to the point where they take advantage of you. But, you know, if you give to others and then just be happy. Like, as long as that action of it makes you happy, then then your friendship will be like good. You know what I mean? Like, because you're not resenting them or anything. You're just like, okay, I just want to do this for you. I'm happy for you. And I want to support you and stuff like that. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, the real friends who know you will always find some way to add value to your life. And you will always find some way to add value to their life. So that's... The TLDR of things. Yeah. And yeah, that will be the end of my video for today. And um, I hope that helped. I don't know if anyone is like struggling with this or, you know, um, dealing with something similar. But um, just some reassurance. I feel like all my podcasts are like reassurance. <laughs> but like nice uh, things that you can take away from this or um, hopefully it will help you in some way or another. And uh, maybe I want to talk about like, you know, making friends uh, in your late 20s or meeting new people in your late 20s for like a future episode because that would be like a whole nother topic because um, I know it's quite difficult sometimes. I've had people come and talk to me about it. So yeah, let me know what you want to see on future episodes. Um, and thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting me always. And I appreciate it. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.